Today we're going to talk about the secret timeline that's hidden in your advanced actions. First of all, I want to thank uh, Alexa Franklin for giving me the idea for this video. She asked a question uh, of me over on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, of course, at Captivate Teacher. Um, teacher is spelled T-E-A-C-H-R, no E. Um, and of course, you can ask me questions there as well as on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Paul Wilson Learning. And just write any question you have in the comments of one of my existing videos. And I'll do my best to either answer it or in cases like this, where it's a good idea for a new video, I will record a new video. So let's get started here. I have this project kind of inspired by one that Alexa was working on here. And the idea with this project here is that I'm going to have a bunch of buttons appear and I'm using the same idea that we've all used from time to time where we want to create a little bit of movement on screen. So in time with the narration that's already been applied to this slide here, I have the S, the M, the A, the R, the T appearing in time with the narration in the script here. So uh, a little bit of movement, a little bit of animation on screen uh, brings the, the training to life, if you will. So you can do the same thing within your advanced actions. A lot of people don't think about this, but advanced actions do follow a timeline as well. The reason we don't know is that because advanced actions run so quickly, you're not aware that there is actually a timeline occurring because it seems like everything in an advanced action is happening all at once. But let me show you a way that you can bring that to life and really take advantage of it here. So I've already imported all of the audio associated with clicking on each one of these buttons here. Let's start with the R because it has two examples or two items that will appear at different moments. And again, I don't need to worry about them on the timeline. In fact, I'm just going to close my timeline so we can get a nice large uh, representation of this screen here. So there we are. There's the R button here. We'll go to the Actions tab. First thing I'm going to do is click the hand cursor and disable the click sound, something I do for all of my buttons. Uh, before I set up an, an advanced action for this click, I'm going to go over to the Options tab and I'm just going to select Stop Slide Audio. The reason that you might do this is if the learner clicks very quickly on one of these buttons uh, and starts playing the audio associated with that click to reveal, you're going to have two audio narrations happening at the same time. So I'm going to click on stop slide audio and you can choose when paused or when clicked. When clicked is appropriate here. And now I can return back to the actions tab and start to write my advanced action that will give me sort of a timeline within my advanced action. So execute advanced actions. I don't have any scripts yet, but this will be the first one. And we'll click on the advanced action icon next to the script dropdown. And here's where our advanced action will be written. Uh, we'll call this one letter R so that we know it's associated with clicking the letter R. The very first thing we're going to do, similar to stopping the slide audio, if this happens to be um, the second button that a user presses, and if they're pressing it before the audio has finished on one of the other buttons, you're going to want to stop any triggered audio that's already playing. So there is an action for that. Coincidentally enough, it's called stop triggered audio. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So once we've stopped any triggered audio, we now want to play our own audio. So in this case here, we'll use the command play audio. And you simply select an audio file. If you double click on that, you have the choice between importing your audio or selecting it from your library if you've already imported it as I've done. So I'm going to select relevant.mp3, click on OK, and that's going to play. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to want to show the two different text shapes 
that are applicable for this particular topic. So we're going to start by displaying relevant one. That's what I've called it. And then follow it up by displaying relevant two. So let's first of all show they're currently not visible in output. So we'll show relevant one. There it is. And then we'll show relevant two. Now, again, as I've pointed out, the, the timeline that occurs within advanced actions is so fast, you won't notice that relevant one is being displayed first and relevant two is being displayed second. In fact, we're going to need to listen or take a look at our audio file and see when to play relevant two. So I'm just going to update this advanced action and close it. And let's go to our library and find that audio file. Here it is. If I double click on it and then click on edit, I can take a look at the timeline of that audio item. In fact, the spot where I want to have the relevant to object appear is essentially right here, 4.1 seconds. So uh, let's click close and cancel and let's return to our advanced action here. So we'll add the delay and this is something that allows you to take advantage of the fact that there is really a timeline occurring here. So we're going to delay next actions by literally 4.1 seconds. And I'm just going to move this up on the on the uh, order of actions here to occur between relevant one and relevant two. And that's basically it. I mean, you could repeat this a number of times for any number of objects that you actually want to appear when you run your advanced action. But let me show you how you can take it to another level as well. One of the things that you can do is you can apply effects similar to how you can apply effects to objects on your timeline. So let's first of all apply an effect for relevant one. Let's go into this and select apply effect and we're going to select which object that we're going to uh, apply that effect to in this case relevant one and you can select whatever effect uh, similar to how you have on your timing panel you can select uh, all the different effects types that are available to you in this case here i'm going to choose an entrance effect and i'm going to choose ease in top now, along with ease in top, of course, there's this icon here, which will allow me to further set the parameters associated with this effect here. So let's do that. We'll have the duration uh, of the effect be relatively short, maybe half a second here. And I'm going to increase the ease effect to 100% and click OK. So let's just move this up so that it occurs immediately after relevant one is shown and we can also do the same thing for relevant two so let's apply an effect to that as well so let's find relevant two there it is we'll choose the same effect here ease in top again each effect will have its own parameters that you can set but i'm going to make these the same as one another and we'll click ok and we're pretty much good to go here. So I'm going to update this action, click OK, and now click Close. So I think we're ready to go here. Let's take a look. We'll see, of course, our regular timeline displayed when we preview this project. And then I'm going to click the R and see how the advanced action timeline looks as well. So let's hit Preview and go with Project. When setting goals, so here's our button. initial slide, Smart and specific, suddenly S M A R T will appear. Will sure your goals Looks are good, and, allow you and to stay of course the slide is paused click at this point. Let's click R and see what happens. Each goal should impact the larger stated objective you set. So our first goal. item appears. Will it make a difference to your overall objective? Followed by if this goal our is next met? item. So as you can see, we can create a timeline within an advanced action. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. 
My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.